Hello everyone, this is Mandeep Singh Shekhawat and we are back with another video on the troubleshooting series How can you secure a server? This is not a in general troubleshooting video but a like kind of a general discussion which you can be asked in an interview that how given a server how can you secure it so that it is not attacked by a hacker so it, uh, the life of a server is enhanced So what are the general steps, what are the general directions you can think in? Uh, first is like how can an external entity establish a connection to your server so when you say uh, you want to make your server secure you want to uh, make sure that any unrequired entity is not accessing your server okay that is the basic definition of secure that you are trying to access any resource so that resource is only accessible to a person which is being intended to let's say my facebook account so i have my username and credentials okay so if i pass those credentials then only i am able to access my account some other person should not be able to allow that so how can you do that in a secure way similar direction you can think of okay so you have to basically make sure that how specific entity how specific external entity is interacting with your server which you want to make secure uh, first thing is you can use uh, TLS as such for any of the web request uh, they will make sure that your requests are in encrypted form and not in kind of plain text so that anyone can view them or anyone can attack them uh, another thing is uh, like uh, let's say uh, this is your local machine and this is your remote uh, your let's say load balancer in front uh, which is uh, fronting your any of the host which are serving the request for the users so uh, let's say they are encrypted by TLS SSL okay now if once the requests ends uh, request uh, reaches to your uh, load balancer okay so the TLS connection will be terminated now while the connections travel from uh, load balancer or your proxy server to actual hosts they will be sent in plain text so you can use the certificates to uh, make your uh, connection more secure for the internal traffic for one, one example could be the amazon certificate manager which is a managed service again where you can uh, create the certificates and use the certificates for your internal traffic uh, moving to the third point so when let's say uh, you are trying to make a connection from your local machine to remote host so how you will do it you will try it uh, like you in general way would be you will be trying to do a as such uh, you can read more about the SSH in our another video which we created but when you use SSH you have to make sure that this connection is properly authenticated or in a secure way there are two ways which you can do it uh, first thing is like uh, you are maintaining some uh, kind of credentials okay so uh, one could be password another could be SSH SSH keys is a more preferred way why because SSH keys is more difficult to crack and you can use uh, self-rotating keys let, so that the keys are rotated in let's say a weekly basis or 30 days or 90 days you can define that rotation period and same policy you can uh, use for credentials and uh, in general lot of organizations use it that uh, a particular user has to change his password every 90 days or every 30 days so that uh, it is not able easy to crack that moving to another point is network firewall now network firewall can be a kind of software or a kind of hardware you have to make sure that any of the traffic any of the unwanted traffic should be filtered out that should be the basic intent of network firewall so you can control the traffic which is going into your system and which is coming out of your system so that any unintended traffic, unintended traffic is not hitting to your actual servers which can cause any attack uh, moving to the next point which you can use to secure your server is abstraction out of resources when we say abstraction out of resources the external entity any of the external users should not be able to hit your servers directly they should like uh, we general expose let's say you are trying to access google.com okay now this google.com uh, is a request is forwarded to any of the machines which are in backend now you should not be able to figure out the user should not be able to figure out what's happening in the background let's say there are some kind of database interaction there are some kind of uh, heavy machinery operation let's say there was some map reduce job which is going on but you should be not, the user should not be able to figure out what's happening in the background what kind of machine is doing that operation user just know that i am hitting google.com and i am getting my response back this is abstracted out so that 
the user cannot directly hit them or can breach via this to actually hit that system directly the request should come via this load balancer or the proxy server which you are maintaining so that all the resources which are in your backend are abstracted out from the user which is trying to access the resources any of the let's say any of the servers or any of the databases or any of the resources you created some rds table you created some dynamic table any of the resources which you are using should not be accessible directly accessible to the external entity another point which is related to it is resource creation in a vpc when we say vpc it's a uh, specific to aws uh, uh, terminology which we use to create a resource in a private vpc so that this uh, resource any of the resource which you are creating are abstracted by external internet let's so say that this is your public internet so you have your private vpc where you have your resources so users cannot directly access any resources which are present in the vpc unless you allow to so that's another thing moving to the networking rules so any of the uh, resources which you create in your system okay you will uh, set some kind of inbound and outbound rules when we say inbound rules which means what kind of traffic can hit to your server this is your server so what kind of traffic can hit to your server outbound rule means what kind of traffic your server can access to let's say uh, i am uh, taking the SSH example I'm allowing on port 20 to this particular IP 1682.11 okay so if I'm getting uh, another uh, any other IP address this request will be completely rejected if only if the uh, request is coming from this IP on port 22 I will allow this request and I will not allow any other request to this server so this kind of rules you can maintain any of the networking rules you can maintain for your servers so that any unintended, unintended traffic is not hitting them uh, moving to the next point which is traffic control so uh, to make uh, the server secure what you have to do is uh, you have to control the traffic one way could be to rate limit the request so any of the requests which are coming if you are able to figure out that uh, from this particular IP you are uh, getting a number of requests let's say uh, 100 requests per second okay so if it's not an intent an intended traffic let's say only human uh, human users are accessing your servers so it's kind of unnatural that you will get 100 requests in a single second so you can uh, block these kind of traffic so you can rate limit these kind of traffic so that your servers are not impacted by that uh, another way is uh, generally you, you might have seen this that you have to confirm that you are not a robot you have to click on that captcha and select some kind of pictures so that uh, you are able to validate that and then later on you are allowed to access the website so this is the another way uh, which you can use to secure your website or secure your server uh, another way is uh, like to make your application secure is continuous patching so any of the applications which you are using let's say uh, that uh, one issue we uh, recently faced related to log 4 j so you if you are able to figure out these kind of resources you have to continuously patch your application that issue was due to uh, was in the java application for the log 4 j okay so if any of the systems any of the applications which are running on your server are using java applications and are using log 4 j should be immediately patched so that you are not able, no, you are not impacted with any of those issues or any of the severities which are uh, exposed in the public so you have to uh, make sure that your applications which are running on your server are continuously patched our uh, final point is proper logging and monitoring uh, this is a mandatory point this is like most important point that you have to set up some kind of monitoring some kind of metrics so that if any issue happens on your system you are able to figure out uh, let's say uh, that uh, rate limiting issue we discussed so if you have proper uh, metrics in place we will be able to figure out that from this particular IP the metrics were breached and you got many requests so you will require metrics and you will also uh, require some kind of alarms on top of that so that the teams which look into that application can check that what is the issue and able to fix that and response within time so that you uh, the system is not compromised okay so these are the in general steps which you can take to secure your server we will meet again with more interesting content on our channel till then bye bye